Hi everyone, my name is Ekta. I'm a year two podiatry student and I study at the University of Northampton. Welcome back to my channel. I know I've been MIA during the holiday season, but it was the holidays, so I really just wanted a break and I really didn't want to do any filming. <laughs> I got so lazy. Um, however, it is a brand new year and I'm out with a brand new interview. Um, today I interviewed Usama, who's also, um, he also attended University of Northampton. He's now a graduate, has been for a little while now. He works at a private practice and he and I had a little chat about um, examination styles and different exams that you would do in podiatry specifically. Um, we don't talk about any other healthcare specific field, but because uh, Usama is a podiatrist and I'm studying podiatry, it is very much catered to that subject area. However, if you are a healthcare student and you wanted to find out more information um, on different examination styles that are available, um, we do cover some of that in this interview, but there will be more information that I will put in the description box below, um, places where you can find examination advice. Um, so I really enjoyed doing this interview specifically because I am about to take my Viva exam this year <laughs> for year two podiatry and I'm stressing out about it and I really wanted to talk to somebody um, and basically just ask some advice. And for all the students that are in the same boat as me, Usama gives us really good advice and I hope you all find this incredibly useful. So um, st please stick around, please watch the rest of the interview and take care. Bye. Hey Usama, how are you today? Hello Ekta, you're all right. How are you keeping? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. It's a bit cold. It's awesome. Well, on. thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's super cold. <laughs> Way to start the new year. <laughs> Um, but thank you so much for joining me here today. I really wanted to dive deep into these questions um, that a lot of students have for um, OSCE questions and Viva questions. So the first question is, um, before we get into that, what made you decide to join podiatry? What, how did you fall into the field? Well, uh, so in terms of coming into podiatry, it's quite interesting, actually. Um, after finishing my A-levels on exams and stuff, I wasn't too sure what to sort of do. Mm -hmm. and I knew it was going to be healthcare-y but didn't really know yeah. exactly what sort of field so yeah. I was having a chat with my brother and it's, it's his friend who kind of got me into podiatry actually he was a podiatrist at the time okay um, and he thought well I've thought about podiatry and I was like mm, not really now <laughs> so we had a bit of a chat and um, yeah. I think the sort of thing that I quite liked about it was the mix the mixture of theory and practical um sort of aspects of podiatry yeah and the cool opportunities that come from podiatry and I thought well actually if it was to do, do the whole degree, there's quite a few different sort of facets of podiatry that I could sort of join. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. And well, I thought, well, actually, I'll give it a shot. So <laughs> I gave it a shot and here I am. That's fantastic. I, I know a lot of people like that find podi uh, podiatry through someone else or um, either they've seen a podiatrist or their parent is a podiatrist. But yeah, so it's really cool, like how different people like find the field. Um, can you... What do podiatry exams look like for a lot of students that are considering podiatry as a career option? Yeah, so I think the exams uh, tend to be based and they are sort of individual from organization and institution to institution really, but mm -hmm. they tend to be a mixture of, of exams uh, that could be written in prose, multiple choice, OSCEs, VIVAs, yeah. uh, tend to be the whole bulk of how, how you're assessed and also um, coursework and assignments as well as how you tend to be assessed. Uh, just in mm -hmm. terms of your years at university. So there's, there's a mixture of both written uh, and practical tests. So they, they mm -hmm. are quite good. But I think, I think the bulk of it tends to be OSCEs and VIVAs. Yeah. It's how we for practical uh, and theoretical knowledge anyway. Okay. Um, and for any students that are watching, can you explain what the differences are between OSCEs and VIVAs and the best way to prepare for them? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, I mean, in terms of the, the OSCEs are, are, is, a, is a practical test that assesses practical skill. Um, you tend to have uh, different stations, typically 10 stations, uh, where, you're, where you go from station to station and you're mm -hmm. asked to, uh, to demonstrate a practical skill okay. of different types. They tend to vary from years one and two. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a little piece of paper that tells you they're asking you to do a particular skill and mm -hmm. the time it goes off and someone blows a whistle and you just start. <laughs> uh, they tend to be typically about, I think it's six minutes per station if, if memory serves right. Yeah. Um, and you sort of, you have, to, you have to just complete that demonstration of skill. Somebody is probably there assessing you and marking you. Uh, and if, uh, and then you sort of 
and you move on. Someone blows a whistle and you move on from station to station. It's a bit like circuit <laughs> training, uh, but there are, no <laughs> rest, there are no rest stops, unfortunately. You just carry on. So yeah. in station, six minutes each, which is 60 minutes. So it tends to be an hour long in length. Mm-hmm. It goes super fast. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah, it really does. And then before you know it, you're sort of done, aren't you? So it's not too bad. I think the good thing about OSCEs is you tend to have sight of the stations well before the exam actually even takes place which is mm-hmm. quite handy and for the vast majority of them you are able to to prepare yeah uh, just by practicing with colleagues and friends around in the year yeah which can be quite good yeah well, well in terms of I was just saying well that is kind of how the off exam works yeah so in a nutshell there mm-hmm yeah no that's that's really good and um a really good thing about the OSCE exams is the you'll get to practice like a lot of these practical elements in clinic as well when you're doing like your um clinical hours so you it's not like you're going into unfamiliar territory with the with the OSCE exams like you like they each exam like yeah. one station for example like you have to measure um you have to like check pulses so you have to use like the Doppler to learn how to like you'll get training on how to do that like they're not just going to throw you in the yeah. deep end like mm-hmm. oh here's an exam yeah. that you've yeah. never <laughs> been used to <laughs> like you've <laughs> never seen surprise <laughs> yeah. well well in terms of especially for the first year of ski anyway yeah. um but the first the first 12 sort of weeks um initially anyway northampton in particular mm-hmm. you're, taught, you're, taught, you're sort of given them initial skills training so you know yeah. all your basic examinations that you would do yeah. and you sort of practice that on real life patients after christmas mm-hmm. and the office exams are just that assessing your practical skill on the, the sort of the, the, that sort of basic initial assessments that you start off with so a lot of it is palpation of pulses yeah um, how, to, how to take blood pressure manually them sort of things how to check reflexes uh, and, it, and it's all about just 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 being able to demonstrate them sort of skills in a sort of timely manner. And um, I mean, they are sort of things you've been doing for the past eight, nine months anyway. Yeah. <laughs> of experience and exposure to them. And like I said, you got sight of them well before the exam. So it shouldn't, yeah. come, uh, so it shouldn't come to some sort of surprise for anybody. Yeah. Um, and like I said, they're quite fun sort of practical sort of little tests you can do on each other. So if you're not yeah. too sure how to, how to how to take a blood pressure manually, grab any willing friend on their arm uh, and I'm sure you can sort of just practice on each other so yeah they yeah. aren't difficult I think a lot of people get nervous about the time pressure um, yeah for sure but if, if you think about it if you practice enough you can get it down to a T and you're able to get it you should be able to get it done well before six minutes absolutely so, yeah uh, there is plenty of time I, I know six minutes sounds quite short but actually mm-hmm. the skills that we're asking you to demonstrate don't take a massive amount of time no, they well, really don't. Doing and you're fairly focused. You can get yeah. it done within about a minute, minute and a half. Yeah. And if you mess up, it's absolutely fine. You know, providing you're in, you're in that six minute time frame, you can start all over again. It shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, exactly. So there's there's honestly like there's no pressure other than other than like the pressure that you put on yourself. I think and that's that's kind of like mainly what it is. Like the teachers, they understand, so they do kind of um, like if you mess up they do allow you to start again so it's yeah, it's not like they're not gonna they're not there to make you fail they're there to like help you but I, it is like it all, is that's true of all exams really no one's there to catch you out no <laughs> no I, but like I feel like students go in with that fear of like oh my god like I'm gonna fail like there's gonna be so many tr- like trick questions in here or there's something that I'm like especially with the vivas I think that's one thing that I'm a little bit nervous of like I've not done my vivas yet we are about to do them um and I think that's one thing I'm really nervous of is just like what if I miss something that's super simple um but for any students that watching are watching would you like to explain what a viva is Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in terms of the vibers, they are a, uh, well, in terms of the OSCEs, the, the, the OSCE exams are there to assess practical skill and mm-hmm. the vibers are there to sort of tease out that theoretical knowledge that goes along with that practical skill effectively. And it tends to follow a, a sort of station format again, albeit three stations this time, and you tend to get 15 minutes each, I think. Um, and, and the idea behind it is being able to sort of, well, the first station is you've got a patient, a real life patient, that is linked to that particular module that you're studying. And mm-hmm. it tends to be, well, for Northampton, you know, you too, you've got an orthopedic viva and you've got a, 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 is it a high risk viva, I believe it is. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, the, it's them two sort of vivas that you have, sorry, it's them two modules that you have a vivas on. Um, so effectively, in if you have an orthopedic viva, for example, you'll have your first patient 
who's got an orthopedic problem or some sort of orthopedic pathology um, and you're sort of throwing them with them into the first room and you've got 15 minutes to have a little chat with them and to figure out what's going on and with yeah. that history 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 is really important have a chat with the patients they're more than happy to volunteer that information to you mm-hmm. um, and it's your job effectively to kind of figure out what's going on yeah. try and do some clinical tests if you know some that would be quite useful and mm-hmm. you're expected to present that patient towards the end um and well that's kind of station number one kind of covered to be honest and then the second station you are taken to a separate room is a bit of a quiet time and you've got a bnf available to you and you can sort of get some time to, to gather your thoughts put it down on paper and the final station which is the kind of, kind of important one here now is your final exam you've mm-hmm. got the two lecturers there who are will just be asking you questions so it's just a conversation really to be honest and i know we sort of say exam people get quite scared about it but it really is just a conversation um, in terms of lecture to initially present the patient so, so this mm-hmm. is mrs smith she's 30 years old presenting with heel pain blah 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 for example yeah. so you got a really good presentation with them for about five minutes mm-hmm. uh, and after you finish presenting the lecturer will end up asking you some questions uh, regarding that patient and or the pathology that they've yeah. got and it's really just teasing information out of you uh, to try and get you the best possible kind of presentation possible to be honest so it's yeah. not too bad no it sounds absolutely <laughs> horrendous. I want to break it down to that which is just a conversation it really isn't yeah I think a lot of people get scared about it purely because it's the unknown they've got no idea what what sort of patient they're facing yeah uh, the <laughs> questions will be coming up and that fear of the unknown and, 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 and the other thing is also fear of the format as well mm. if it's the first time sitting that exam you don't necessarily know what the format's going to be like and you're sort of yeah. walking in a rough idea but you're not too sure because you haven't been through it yeah. That is true. Of what I'm saying with the OSCE as well, to be honest. You know, once you understand that it's going to be a station based yeah. format, it makes it a little bit easier. And plus, yeah. you have to remember, you know, if it's your first time coming to university, your first time studying, studying, just studying podiatry, if you've never done any of these practical exams and you're used to paper based written exams only, yeah. it is a little bit different. And again, it's really not too bad. I mean, it's easier for me to say it now I've done them. <laughs> but yeah. in terms of those going through it, yeah, it's really, really not that bad. I think the school, uh, in terms of the, the the tips, really, I would say is yeah. for OSCEs is just preparations. So know your OSCE stations yeah. really well, um, and just practice your skills with colleagues and friends around you. For your vivas, it's really good revision would really help you there. To be honest, knowing your, your well, it's it's breath versus depth. To be honest, right? So yeah. knowing a good expansive knowledge, having a good expansive knowledge base is going to really help you with that one because you simply yeah. don't know what's going to come up. Um, and if you haven't revised that particular topic, well, then it's not, it's not going to go great, is it? So it's about nope. <laughs> revising as much as possible as you can, um, and having a, a decent understanding of the of the of you know of the different pathologies that exist in that particular yeah. module that you're studying. Um, and you know, if, if you've got that covered, you sh- should be able to walk into the exam fairly confident that you'll be able to answer any questions that come your way. And the questions mm-hmm. aren't even that difficult. It's really be based around the etiology, the pathophysiology of that particular sort of uh, that pathology, and the treatment options, both conservative. Uh, it, well, it'll be conservative, possibly surgical, but it's not very common. Uh, but yeah. they'll also be asking you for your short-term plan and your long-term plan for that patient as well. So what do you do for them immediately, and how are you going to sort of rehab them and get them better going forward? Yeah. Uh, which you know, it's the sort of things you would do with a real-life patient anyway, and mm-hmm. the sort of things you hear from lecturers around you. They'll say to you, well, a the vibe is just a conversation and it really is just a conversation and b is every single patient in real life is a vibe but when you get a patient mm. sat in your chair you know, if he's a new patient for example um you know that patient has an expectation that you that you'll be able to tell them what they've got what's going on how yeah. it all happened what you're gonna do for them and you know <laughs> have you got a treatment plan for them in place and that is effectively what a vibe is isn't it and you know mm. i guess yeah. all the time once you've got some experience having that conversation with a real life patient isn't too difficult no but the whole point of the vibe is to kind of train you up and hone them skills so when you're out in the real world dealing with real life patients it, it becomes second nature yeah yeah absolutely and that's such a great transition on to our last questions uh which is do you have any advice for students which we've already covered um but do you have any last minute advice for students that are watch- that are going to be watching this yeah sure well i would just say just revise as much as you possibly can yeah. um which would really really help you to be honest um I really make good use of your clinical time. I mean, yeah. I know it's a bit different with the whole COVID situation on at the moment, yeah. but generally speaking, as and when you're in clinic with patients, you know, having supervision from lectures around you, really mm. make the most of it is one thing I would say is, you know, don't shy away from difficult things that you're not too sure of. 
go away, learn it, uh, and I'll, I'll feel free to ask questions. That's what they're there for. Let's mm -hmm. sure they help you to understand things. And yeah. if you're not too sure, you can just revisit it again with them. Um, and you know, and, and, and I guess the other thing as well is because what you do know is from your clinical sort of rotations, one of the, that is your population of patients that the university will pick for your exam. So getting mm -hmm. to see as many different patients as you possibly can is quite useful because it's quite possible one of them patients may be your exam patient. Mm. Um, it's quite handy to, sort of to, to, to sort of just see as many patients as you possibly can. Yeah. And just around. feel free to ask as many questions as possible. If you're not too sure of a pathology or how it presents in a particular way, go away and learn it is the other thing. Uh, and also for vibers, don't forget your pharmacology, which will definitely mm. come into, especially yeah. in terms of your pod med uh, vibers, that comes into it massively. So knowing your drugs, knowing how they work, um, knowing interactions and contraindications would be quite useful. And the other thing is, I think often sometimes, you know, while students do take a really good history yeah. of patients, they sort of write down all the drugs quite willingly, but they don't necessarily know what they are. So you yeah. being able to being familiar with the DNF would be quite handy as well. A lot of people just Google things on their phone, but I know for Northampton in particular, the BNF is a station for the first year OSCE. Yeah. So getting to know what it is, how to use it, how to find yeah. out all the information in the BNF is, is quite useful and quite handy. And again, just have a really good expansive knowledge as possible mm -hmm. and just stay as calm as you possibly can. You know, if yeah. you're not too sure about a question in the Viper, just say, look, I'm not too sure, let's move on. And we'll move on to a whole other question. And we'll come back to it if there's some time towards the end. Yeah. Um, and of course, in Vivas, don't stop talking, really. Talk, talk, talk as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, and just be as thorough in your presentation as you possibly can as well, because they'll be marking you off on your presentation. Mm -hmm. and they'll have a list of questions based on that particular patient, because the lecturers have obviously seen your patient before you have, and they've got yeah. good understanding of what's wrong with them. So if you're good in your presentation, you've already answered pretty much half their questions effectively. Yeah. Um, and what you'll tend to find, if you're doing quite well, they'll push and push and push, and make the questions really hard for you. And you walk out thinking, oh my God, I've definitely found that. But actually, the whole point of it is to see and see how far they can push you. And it mm -hmm. tends to be to differentiate you for grades, for example. But yeah, so just be as thorough as you can, be as calm as you possibly can, yeah. and you keep on talking. Awesome. That is really, really good advice. Thank you so much. Now, on to our next portion of the interview, which is the fun question. <laughs> Are you ready for this? <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. Go for it. Awesome. So the first question is, would you rather be invisible or have mind reading powers? Oh, I would say probably having mind reading powers would be quite useful. <laughs> 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 sort of tricky people and tricky patients. Figuring yeah. out just what, what is on their mind. Yeah, I think yeah. that would be quite would be quite handy. Um, yeah. yeah, you can sort of find out. What, <laughs> um, know, the second question: on. What is your best scary story? Oh, scary story. Um, I guess one scary story would be when I nearly sort of got lost on top of a mountain. That me and a few <gasps> friends were sort of um. Climbing. Oh my god. Oh um, no! <laughs> I think it was the last last Christmas, I think last December, some point, we went down to the Peak District and we thought we'd yeah. do some sort of mountain climbing. Yeah. And uh, sort of underestimated how difficult it would be, especially me anyway. And uh, it should have been two hours up and two hours down. It took us four and a half hours up and like six hours down. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! By the time we're coming down, it's like night time. It's really dark. Oh Ill dear. <laughs> Um, no idea what the hell's going on. I can't read a map for goodness sake. So that wasn't very handy, Aww. was it? Um, no, I was yeah. using our torches and Google Maps trying to guide us down. And we, we, finally got, <laughs> we finally got down to sort of ground level, which was yeah. quite handy. But uh, I think you're looking at a laugh on it now. But uh, at the time, it wasn't <laughs> as fun. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bless. Um, if you were a wrestler, what would your entrance theme song be? God. Um, if I was a wrestler, well, I'm certainly not a wrestler, that's for sure. Um, what would my entrance theme song be? Uh, it's probably a bit cliche, but I would say that Rocky theme tune would be quite handy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that, I know, but, yeah, but I, I think I'll go for that one. <laughs> that's a really good one. Um, if you must sing karaoke, what song would you pick? Well, must sing is it's quite a key word there. To, I mean, any opportunity <laughs> for karaoke, I am there, that's for sure. Uh, I don't think I've got the vocals to carry off. Um, <laughs> good fun, isn't it? What song would I pick? Uh, but, but, but I would say Bon Jovi, Living on a Prior. Oh, a, that's a good, good one. one um, and last question, what's your favourite time of day and why? 
favorite time of day it would be um home time it's definitely my favorite time <laughs> home uh, time everything's done time to get home um <laughs> no, favorite time of day probably would be uh, uh sunrise it would be quite nice to be honest mm. I think. It's, especially now anyway because yeah like, it's you know if you go to work quite early it's quite dark when you come back it's quite dark i think just driving along and seeing the sunrise and seeing yeah they pick up it's quite a nice time in the morning if you're able to try to catch it so yeah awesome that's a really really good answer anyways thank you so much for today thank you so much for answering our questions um and help giving us advice giving students advice for oh, oscis well, vivas any exams that we could have in podiatry and i hope um, that any podiatry student that's watching this finds this useful and helpful and any student that's watching this considers um, podiatry as a career option. So that would be really fantastic, two fantastic outcomes. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye-bye. Thank you, you too, Actor. See you. <laughs> Voice came from my throat. Okay. Um, hi everybody, my name is Ekta. I'm a year two student at, podi <laughs> at podiatry. And um, a, a really um, good thing about the, so the OSCE, kind of oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I kind of cut you off there. <laughs> what were you saying? Uh, well, oh my God, this is terrible. My throat needs to stop making noises.